What's up, Donna developers? Are you like me and you're always paying attention to some of the, the latest stuff that's coming out in the newest version of .NET and C Sharp? C -sharp? Well, in .NET 8, in C Sharp 12, there's this really cool thing called primary constructors that comes out in the next version in November of 2023. And I wanted to show it to you. So let's take a look at that right here on learning.net and C Sharp with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac here. Welcome to another series of videos that I'm going to start creating around, you know, some of the new cool things that are coming out in .NET 8, C Sharp 12, and just .NET stuff in general, because I think we're all .NET developers. We all want to take a look at some of the new things that are coming out of the .NET team, and I want to show some of them. So um, first, I want to just call out what we're going to be talking about today. So if folks haven't been watching to some of the stuff that's coming out in .NET 8 and in C Sharp 12, there's this really, really awesome uh, place in docs where you can see what's new in C Sharp 12. And I'm gonna be talking specifically in this video about primary constructors. Um, for the folks like me and most of maybe the folks that are watching this video that you've been a .NET developer for a bit, you're familiar with constructors and what value they bring as we're building out new objects um, in our applications. And you know, we've in the past, we've had a few different ways that we could, I guess, create new instances of those objects or those classes that we're building out. You know, we could have um, a static interface that populates them. We are a static method that we could populate with them. Um, we could pass values into the constructor and manually put our stuff in there. Um, and C Sharp 12 over the core, or C Sharp over the course of the last few iterations has started to add some more richness to the constructor experience. And um, in the previous versions of C Sharp that came out, um, there are some things around adding primary constructors in different ways to inject data into um, our constructors to be able to build out our objects. And C Sharp 12, it's the next iteration of that. So take a look at this what's new, or if you want to get like a more detailed version, you can take a look at this blog post from our friend Kathleen, who is uh, one of the PMs um, on the .NET team specializing in C Sharp and languages in general. And in, the, in this uh, blog post, like Kathleen kind of goes over what primary constructors are. So, you know, as I mentioned a bit earlier, C Sharp 9 kind of introduced like this idea of primary constructors for um, particular types of objects. And now in C Sharp 12, we have even more types of objects that we can use. And um, the basic syntax is listed out here. And I'm gonna show like an example that, um, that I played around with, but it's really, really cool because it just gives you like more ability to add, to build out complex objects, right? especially when we have objects that represent maybe some sources in data, maybe they have sources in logic, um, and being able to put all of that into the constructor instead of having to build it out like in our code or in some other method somewhere else is really, really valuable. So what does it actually look like in practice? So let me hop over to Visual Studio here. And Visual Studio, as you can see, I just have a, a simple console application. And if I take a look at the project, um, as you can see, it's a .NET 8 project, so I'm using the latest preview, and I have the language version. So this guy right here, I have the language version set to preview, and that's how we're going to light up those new pieces of C Sharp 12. Um, so if I go back in here, and I just have this simple component, what I want to do is I want to create a, um, a, a new a new object or a new class. And I want that class to represent, I'm a basketball fan, so in the States, I love the NBA. My favorite basketball player is Michael Jordan. So um, if you don't care about sports, just worry about what I'm doing. Don't care about the the um, the actual example, but it sh it'll show you kind of in a nutshell what you can do in this space. So what I want to do here is I'm going to create a, a new public class. So public class, and I'm going to have a, this class, it's called player. And it's going to, in for this constructor, I'm using the primary constructor uh, notation here. So I'm going to have an int of, of ID. I'm going to pass in the, the name of this particular player. And I'm going to pass in a couple of additional uh, parameters to build out some additional properties that I have in this particular object. So in that particular case, I have an int of points and an int of games. All right. So inside of here, so I'm going to have a public player. I'm going to have uh, the building out of this particular class. So I'm passing into there an ID, string, and this is going to override the same thing. So int, and then I'm um, setting the default of zero and zero. So by default, um, a player is going to have an ID, a name, and zero games and zero points. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specify, okay, so how do I wanna initialize um, the ID? So that's going to be the ID that gets passed in from the player, um, 
um, the player uh, parameter that's getting passed in. And then I have the name as well. So that's a getter setter. And then it's just that same value, that name that's being passed in, but trimmed just to make sure that there's no additional white space in front of it. All right. So, and this is when things start to get really, really cool with a primary constructor. So I'm going to have, I want to create a new member to this particular class. And that particular member is average. And for folks who don't follow basketball, the average for points specifically is the amount of points that you have over the amount of games that you play. So what does that actually look like when I'm building out in a primary constructor? So, so I have games and I want to have some conditional checking. So if games is greater than zero, basically, um, if the player has played any games, um, I'm going to use some turning operation to use math.round and then I'm going to pass in points, games, let me just move my head. My head's in the way. It's up a little bit. Oh, I moved. So syntax games, and I'm going to have it be rounding. So as you can see here, we have, I'm going to round the points, divide by the games. So this is going to uh, have a double. So I want to have some decimal points there. And in the situation where game, and I'm going to round that. So it's going to be some number with two decimal points. And then if games are zero or less than zero, I just return zero. So, okay. So close that out. All right, so then what? So we have a, a player, right? What, 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 I, what I wanna do now, let me just move my head back down because I don't wanna get in the way again, is I want to just test out what this player looks like. And in this particular case, let me just get rid of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable of, of name player, and that's gonna be a new player. And inside there, I'm gonna pass in some stuff. So. Uh, the ID is going to be one. The name is going to be Michael Jordan, like I mentioned, my favorite player. And then I looked earlier to see what Michael Jordan's stats were. So Michael Jordan, over his career, scored uh, 32,292 points, which is a lot. It's like top five all time. And he played in uh, 1,072 games. All right. So what I want to do now, what, what's actually happening behind the scenes is whenever I create or whenever I access, sorry, this particular object, the average field is going to be popular. The average property is going to be uh, populated with the the number 32292 divided by uh, 1072. And what does that actually look like? We, let's just write out a little console app, console write line. So console write line, and then I'm using um, string interpolation. So player names, career average was player.average points per game. All right. So, all right. So what I can do now is if I just control F5, I just run this, whoops. Save this, whoops. Save, let's just run that. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pop up just the output of our console.write line once Visual Studio builds and runs it. And what it'll show, let me just move this over. It just shows that, let me just zoom in. Michael Jordan's career average was 30.12 per game. Which, I mean, again, we, this is a simple example, right? We could have done um, something a bit more complicated, but I want to show like, that you can do something kind of interesting. So if we scroll down a little bit, again, like the ability to take a new field that's based on logic, right? Logic and data combined, actually, and output it without having to create another method, do this inline or what have you, it's really, really valuable. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I want to show some a cool things coming to C sharp 12 again dot net 8 um, and C sharp 12 ship together now. So at dot net conf in November of 2023, we're going to have this really, really cool stuff. And I hope that you like this sort of stuff. I'm going to be doing some videos around some of the new stuff coming out dot net 8 C sharp 12 over the next few weeks. Um, just to see, you know what if people like this sort of stuff. So if you like it, be sure to like, subscribe, follow, let me know um, if there's other sort of stuff that you want to see. And other than that, yeah, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.